It didn't seem to, to reap any of the monetary rewards that they deserve. With us today is one of the original members of the Supreme. She has since embarked on a solo career, has become a best-selling author, and recently she solved, resolved rather, a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Motown. Will you please welcome Mary Wilson. <laughs> right now with a former Motown artist who Mary discovered while on tour with the Supremes and he in turn discovered, wrote and produced Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5's first hit album but didn't receive one royalty, one penny of royalty money which is incredible. Will you please welcome a man who once opened for the Beatles and fired Jimi Hendrix from his band, Bobby Taylor. <laughs> Each other? Occasionally we do, yeah. like this. Yeah. More yeah. like this. We like do. this, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or at your house. Yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. Bobby Coop and the Vancouver's, right? Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. Yeah, she was the one that it, discovered us. Yeah. This here. We were performing in Vancouver at the cave, and this was back in 16. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, th it was during the days when Barry Gordy would travel around with us. I mean, he would never let us out of, our, out of his sight. And we decided one night to go down to this little club because we heard this great band. They're a mixed band, actually, because was, yeah. uh, Tommy, Tommy Chong, Chong, you know, Cheech and Chong, yes. was part the of the Vancouver's. Oh, you didn't even play? Yes, yeah, he was a yeah. gu guitarist and all. So we went down to see, uh, see the guys and just fell in love with them, went back and raved. And plus, we stayed out so late, Barry and Diane were wondering, well, where were you? Where were you, Mary and, and Florence, you know? And we said that we were down in this group. So the next night, everyone came down to see them. And uh, He had Barry, his cigar and says, I'm going to make you guys stars. You know? <laughs> and did you believe him? Uh, well, a year later, we took off on our own to go to Motown. We, we got signed, but a, a year did. later, we had to drive and work our way down to L.A. and... So you mean they would just come, he would just come and sign you and then just leave you there? Well, that's, that's what he did. Well, yeah. But you weren't signed in the beginning, were you? Yes. Oh, you weren't? He said, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> he he sent Hal Davis up. Mm -hmm. He sent Hal Davis. Yeah. And that, um, that's how a lot of groups were discovered. You just saw them and, right. uh, like Barry said, I like them and uh, yeah, I'll but, take you on. Which is fine, but once they take you on, they should do something for you. You know, yeah, uh -huh. that, I mean, yeah, he did something for us. At that point, you you signed anything. I, didn't, what was the problem with your contract with yourself? Well, what we were speaking about in my book, my first book, was that at, at the age of 16, we signed Congress. It's like we were going to Motown Records to see the uh, Mary Wells and Miracles and to be a part of that. And anything, we would sign any contract to get recorded. We didn't care what, what we were, we didn't even know we were giving anything away. We were living in the projects and all. So when they said, well, you know, we'll sign you, we signed the contracts, not knowing that, yes, we were signing away the majority of the percentage that we could have uh, could have gotten and didn't know later on to renegotiate for a why, higher percentage. Why not? When you began to be really famous, didn't you get your own lawyers? Didn't you get your own people around you saying, yes, hold it? Nah, you no. couldn't have no lawyers. No, uh -uh, no, no, lawyers have... no lawyers were allowed. They only had one lawyer, and that, was... and that was Motown's lawyer. You had to sign five contracts. First, Five contracts. Yeah. First one that you had to sign was... These are all young kids. Yeah. All right, well, no, I don't know about myself, but no. most of them were young. But, <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, the, the first contract that you had to sign was uh, a power of attorney. So you, power of attorney, so you gave them all right to sign your name? Oh, yeah, they signed all of your checks. Uh, you know, we never saw no checks. And you know. right, one thing I do have to say that, and I, as I'm looking back now, you know, this is not what I was feeling then. Then I would have done anything of to course, be signed. I really would and even as I look back, I know that the little girl from the Brewster Projects could not have been sitting here today had it not been for a Motown and a Barry Gordy. However, I look back and I say, but I wish I had had a lawyer on my side to, right. to tell me, well, you know, if you sign this contract and it says you're getting 3% of what? See, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I think talent is talent. Yes. I think, yes, you would be sitting here today. You would have come up 
a different way. You would have found so. your way through. That's Do you know that. what I mean? Maybe, but you, you, you see, the way Motown did it, it was, uh, this is a family. We're going to take some of these young black people off of the streets, put them here, record them, get behind them. They got behind some people. Uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, some people are cool. <laughs> but, some people. They didn't, but, why didn't they get behind you? You, ba you did so much. You recorded. Well, now they you did. You wrote. They, now they did get behind me. I had three uh, number one hits. Yeah. Okay. How many records? Uh, so. I, I guess better than, say, six million. So you should have six million dollars in your pocket. Nah. Why? I went on tour with them. Yeah. I, w I went on tour with them. We did about 200, about two, 202, 202 one-nighters. And Mary and them were paying me $2,750 per night. Now, everybody can count, right? Mm -hmm. 202 one-nighters, 2750 right. per. Okay. When I got back to the company, I owed them 85000 <laughs> Because they charged you for what? Uh, studio time. Uh. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, you took the bus over here and, uh, no, you took the plane over here and you guys went over here to, to, uh, do the thing with the Beatles and, uh, you, you went over here and you did this and that, it. You I don't owe, know. You came off a tour owing, owing them. 85000 So at one point, didn't someone say to you, they're taking you? Because me, me. You, you did. see, uh, Bobby Taylor was known as the crazy one. Yeah. Because if... I didn't get what I wanted or get my money. You said I went, something. No, no. I'd take my gun or, or I'd go berserk on them. And <laughs> I'd jump on somebody. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you, it, those were the things that I did. I mean, for instance, my group was the first mixed group ever, right? Right. They fired my group. Now, how do you fire somebody that's under contract? They fired Tommy Chong. And he's sitting back now in Bel Air laughing. But, they, but, didn't, <laughs> but didn't he say anything? Didn't he say we have a contract? I mean, were you all so naive? Well, first well, of all, you got to remember. You know, I would I yeah. want to yeah. address that. Yes, yeah. we were very naive. Wait, I want to yeah. go to commercial, and then I want to come back. Okay. <laughs> How naive? We were very naive, but we also recognized that we were in a very wonderful position. Right. We were in a position where we were reaching millions and millions of people, doing something that only other people dreamt about. And I gotta say, the Supremes were a little different, and we were we were yes, the well, you were kind the, of the babies right, and the you right, know the, yeah. the favorites of them all. But look and what happened to all of you, a lot of Diana. Yeah, a lot of a lot of us uh, didn't didn't fare so well. But I do know one thing: it was a college for me, and I learned so much even from the mistakes. And I'm who I am today because after that, after not receiving all the monies that I thought I should have received, I've been able to go out there and rebuild my career from what. But a lot of them haven't. A yeah. lot of them have. I want to talk about that. A lot of them have. That's what, you know, today we're sitting here with people mm -hmm. that are saying it's not fair. And mm -hmm. we'll be back. Don't go away. We'll be back with more of the Inside Scoop on Motown right after this. Taylor, the man who really discovered Michael Jackson. Um, did, uh, and we were talking about people that didn't fare well. Obviously, right. Mary Wells, which you're going to talk about. Now, you seem very uh, at content now with Motown, you know. Yes. But you just sued them. I you just sued, sued them. them, so you I can't did. be that content. And, you know, and I, and I wrote about it as well. Yeah, I so, sued them, and I wrote about it as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm okay. done banging on the microphone. You shouldn't know how many times you've been here already. I did, and I'm very happy to say that after years of spending millions of dollars in a lawsuit with Motown, which I will probably go to my grave really believing that I was right in but my... But you were right. You are the name right Supremes, the, and they know. said you didn't. So what happened was, after years of suing them, you know, I finally said, you know, this is silly. I, I made millions before. No, I don't have it in my pocket, but I can make millions again. 
Why should I continue to run after all this spilled milk? No. Whether it's right or wrong, I said, it finally let me let it go. I See? called up Barry Gordy, I said, Barry, listen, you know, I, we gotta settle this. And he said, well, you know, you should have called me a long time ago. He says, that's all I want, let's talk. We talked, settled it, and, and, what did and you now get I, gave, I gave all the rights, my rights, into the name Supremes that I had been, you know, fighting for, that I truly believe belonged to the Supremes. Right. And, and we what, spoke and you, about this yes, before. And you gave it to him? You gave it back I, to him? Well, I gave up all rights. You gave up all, all rights, rights to, yes, to the name I of the Supremes, and you're happy? And I'm happy, because let me tell you what happened. <laughs> you're right. Joe. You I, would even, I, would, know, I would even be happy to have the name Sir. I know. Right. And you know, it's, it's, it was amazing when I let it go. It, it, my life it changed. Need you. My life it's changed. The same but with like me. I said, I'll go to my grave morally knowing that I was right. But who wants to be morally right and broke? So, you know. Look, so, Kenny, do, do you, know what, you know what it does? So, sometimes it makes, you a, uh, it makes you an enemy of yourself. You know, yes. I hated, I mean, I hated Motown. I hated any and everybody that was in Motown, and this was, no, no, darling, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, it, this was the executives, right. Yeah, right? That's right, and then that got into me, made me a worse person. But here you are, you're the man that discovered the Jacksons. I'm doing pretty good now, though. Okay, thank God, but we have people coming up that weren't doing very good. Uh, well, when Don't I, Don't you think I, we should all get what we deserve? Well, you see, know what I'm you know, that, that goes, in business, that I mean, goes if you find ways, the Jacksons, so, don't you think? But it goes two ways. I found the Jacksons. Uh, I was lucky. They were on my show in Chicago when I right. found them. Um, I saw this little kid singing James Brown. He was great. Hey! Yeah! Hey! Hey! Johnny was the day and doing those spins. And I said, ooh, check this guy out. <laughs> slept on me. He slept in my lap. Uh, uh -huh. I took those kids. How old was he then? About 22? No, he was I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I took those kids yeah. back to the company. Uh, for two years, I took care of them. Two years. I took care of them, not Motown, me. When the first record was released, Barry Gordy said something to me that has always stuck. He said, uh, Taylor, uh, when they, as soon as they get rich, uh, they're gonna forget who you are. And they ain't gonna speak to you. And he said that to me. And two weeks ago, it's the first time since 1975 that I spoke to any of the Jacksons. I spoke to Randy Jackson. And he did, came to see me in Vancouver. And did he say which one is Randy Taylor? is the baby. He wasn't even in it at the time. Right. See, but he's the baby do. kid. But, but he remembered me yeah. from how I took care of them. You see, I love those kids. Yeah. I love that family. And it was about making music. That's my thing. Uh, that's why we were at Motown, because we love performing and making uh, but music. But the two of you sitting here doing well, we, Mary Wells yes. is sitting in a hospital. It's a name even I know. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, I'm not into music. I mean, I can tell you every comic mm -hmm. from 1900. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mary yes. Wells, a name that I know. I can tell you what she did. I can hear a record and go, that's Mary Wells. And this woman is sitting in a hospital, no money. That's not right. That's not when you're. That's not right. I know. I, 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 I we will be speaking with Mary. Right? Yeah, we're gonna and get on the phone. Yeah. Great, because I was working along with Mary a couple of months ago when she had first had the cancer, and it's it's amazing because she and I spoke about this as well. I feel that I could have been a case. A, a case that of same way, that yeah. same way. Florence yeah. Ballard, Paul, Motown, yes. Paul Williams, Paul Williams of the Temptations. Yes. However, I've, got, I've got to say this. I've got to say this because I want it to be a very fair of what we're doing. Right. Motown gave a, a millions of people happiness. Right. There were some things, and I will be the first to say because I've written in my 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 books that yes, some of us were screwed. However. Sometimes in life, you know, there, there are things like in the industry that go on, and if you get more, I think the beauty that we've given the world has been, been yeah, a lot. Yeah, but I think when you've given the world beauty, and it's wonderful and it's terrific, I think you shouldn't be sitting in a hospital with four children saying, where am I going to well, get the money that's for my That's why I worked my yeah, bones off so that I wouldn't, this, that was the point I was trying to yeah. make. But wait, wait, let's, we're going to get her on the phone, there let's go to commercial, and, work. and then we come back, we'll talk to her on the phone, okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. don't go anywhere, we're going to be back with more Dish on Motown and Motown's front founder Barry Gordy and his ex-wife and we'll continue mm -hmm. and Great. stay with us okay <laughs>
Supremes and Bobby Taylor, the man who discovered Michael Jackson. On the phone, we have, I think we got her, Mary Wells. As Mary Wells, you know, is a Motown legend who said, even I know, I said, my guy, and you, <laughs> that's why I'm glad she sang it. And you beat me to the punch, helped build the Motown empire. And now, unfortunately, there's nothing to show for it. She's penniless. She's back in the hospital with throat cancer. And we have her on the phone right now. Let's see how she's doing. Mary? Yes. Oh, good. How nice to speak with you. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm not going too bad today. Uh, uh, what, what is the prognosis? Well, I have two, um, oral phonemes in my arm. And they're going to try to, um, minimize the damage that I have to do to the shrink it. Good. In the next, uh, two months. Do you, do you have medical insurance? Thank goodness. All right, because that's terribly, terribly important. What about your children now? Are you married? Uh, no, I'm not. And you have how many children? Four? Four, yes. So do you have any income at the moment? No, no, I don't. Now, we're sitting here talking about what Motown uh, owed people, uh, theoretically owed people. Uh, are you, do you have a lawsuit going with Motown? Have you spoken to Barry Gordy and told him that you, you, you know, what's happened to you, that you're ill at the moment, that you have the children and all that? Well, I think the lawyer told me that he had discussed this with Barry. What about the, the royalties? Because, you know, isn't that where you get your money from, all the royalties? Royalties, yeah. yeah. Royalties. royalties is 1964. Have you seen any royalties since you left Motown? Oh, no, not none at all. None at all since no. 1964? Wow, how are you? How are you living? I understand that um, friends are. Uh, is, a, is a fun set up? Do you? Okay. Hi, Mary. This is Mary Wilson speaking. I don't know if you knew. Hi, Mary. Bobby this Taylor is Bobby. Here. Hi, Mary. How are you, sweetheart? Um, they had uh, the Rhythm and Blues Foundation set up a a fund for Mary Wells. Well, Mary, we'd like to send you a check from the show. We're not a rich show, but. Um, We'll do, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get the address. And we'll, we'll, can we flash it on the screen? We'll flash the address on the screen. Anyone interested in helping you can write to the Rhythm and Blues Foundation, 14th and Constitution, Northwest. It's a toughie. Suite 4603 in Washington, 20560. And this is not a contribution from our show, Mary. What we'll do, we'll send you a check, but you have to come on the show when you're feeling better. Okay. Okay? So it's like an advance, all right? <laughs> we'll bring you, we'll bring the children to New York and let them have a good time for a change. And we're and I hope to, you, we're yeah. trying to get uh, that record that I uh, wrote on you, Mary, released so we can get some money from that. We're just waiting for the little fat guy over there in England to get it done. You know what I mean? Well, let's start working on that, too. Yeah. And Mary, get well and see if you can get a rich doctor while you're there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back. And thank you so much for speaking with us. We'll be right back. It's more on no Talking with former Motown stars Mary Wilson of the Supremes. Her book, of course, is called Supreme Fate. And Bobby Taylor, we keep saying over and over, we can just say Bobby Taylor, but the man who discovered Michael Jackson. And right. some say Motown wouldn't be what it is today without the influence of my next guest. Yet when MCA bought Motown for $61 million, all she received was a plaque. A plaque. She was a force behind the man, Barry Gordy, and she is also his former wife. Will you please welcome... Renova Gordy Singleton. How nice to have you back. <laughs> didn't you... Didn't you help found Motown? Didn't you start it with yes, Barry? Yes, I, I was the co-founder of Motown, the first executive vice president, literally the woman behind Barry Gordy. When I met him, he had nothing. In fact, he moved in with me into my one-bedroom apartment. So what happened when he got the $61 <laughs> million and you got the plaque? What happened? <laughs> Why? I, why? You know, it's just, it's just a, it's a real tragic story. I've, I've written the book. Yes. 
Um, you were on with the book. Yes, I was on with the book, Bury Me in Motown. Okay. And, it, and it talks about the Motown story. You know, it's the real inside story about the triumphs and the tragedies, because there was really a lot of tragedy involved. And this Mary Wells story is, is very sad to me, because the company, it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to happen like that. In other words, we were a family. And we were built on, you know, trust and faith. And like Mary was saying, they signed contracts. In the beginning, we wouldn't even allow people to read the contracts. You know, hey, just sign the contract. You know, trust us. And it was that kind of thing that, uh, that we had going. You know, it was a family, trust and love and honesty. And, uh, and so I was the one really pushing towards that. And I believed in him. And I put all my trust in him, you know, because I had everybody else. Trust this guy. Believe in him. Faith and family. So I also talked about profit sharing and I could see this dream being huge where everybody would share in it so that a Mary Wells wouldn't have to end up in the condition that she is today you know but in the final analysis Barry Gordy winds up with all the money and I being co-founder and the woman behind the man have absolutely nothing did you sue here we go again did you sue you know it was we such all did. you all did of course doesn't make any difference Barry told me one time uh you're gonna <laughs> need the money when you win it I'm gonna keep you in court that long. And this is the truth. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I learned a great lesson from the man. A great lesson. You know, he's one of the best. That company was one of the best universities that you could ever have gone to. Exactly. Because you know, exactly. it, we have to change. We have to not change. It's not Motown. It's yeah. like Mary we, started to yeah, say. Yeah, we want to change. It's the industry. It's the way people, everything's commercial today. And we as artists, we as young people growing up, need to find, get more education and know, not be so trusting. We need to know what we're going into, sure. rather than selling our souls for whatever it takes. We the all in, do, the yeah. industry, and when Barry and Ray and everyone started out, there was no black role models for Oak entrepreneurs. I really believe, as Ray said, that no one set out to, to, to take money from anyone. It was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to, this is my dream. Very good. He said, this is my dream. I'm going for it. You want to come aboard? You want to come aboard? Yes, we want to come aboard. But everyone needs to start taking care of themselves so we can no longer be victims. Well, the problem was others. that everybody trusted him, you know, and he right, was right. like the father, and we were the it father and mother kissy. image. Yeah, okay. yeah. Kissy, kissy, so, you know, yeah. everybody expected to be taken care of in the final analysis, including, including you. myself. You know? What happened when you found out that he was having a romance with Diana? Oh, at that time, we were, we we, 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 yeah, we were separated, oh, so, okay. so, yeah, yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> right. No, no, no. If he separated or you divorced, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that's just, you know, that's, yeah. oh, that's okay. Yeah. What about, what, as a divorce, you didn't get a loss? Not, uh, not at all, you know. Um, were you promised? This, uh, yeah, I was promised, you know, okay, just take this now, you know, and then, uh, you know, in the final analysis, you know, when things are really great and, you know, when it, we're, we're, we're always going to be together and, uh, you know, I'll always take care of you. So when this company is sold or whatever, you know, and the money is there, then, you know, you'll never have anything to worry about. So what happened that you suddenly no longer with Motown? Well, when he sold the company. Right. Uh, for so he said, here months, I am with yeah, my money. Yeah, right. And I got the plaque. Then I knew it was time for me to do something else. Were you ever threatened by them? You know, you hear I these. Was. You were, because I've heard these stories. Coming on this show. Coming on this little show? Yeah, where's show? my bodyguard? He's around here somewhere. Are you serious? I'm, I'm serious. You I got a bodyguard. bodyguard. Where is he? Where's your bodyguard? He's around here somewhere. You were threatened? He's close by. No, you better be. There he is. There he is. See? You see what I mean? Come over here. Nobody's going to believe on, this. <laughs> yeah. You, you were threatened not to come on the well, show? Now, it must have been some jerk because, you know, I, I liked it. I mean, you know, it was fun to me because the last time that that happened to me, was in 1971. Yeah. I was threatened, and I shot a guy. And I was threatened, and the uh, feds and so you know, right. so forth and so on. They had phone calls of it. That you were threatened. Yeah, and I shot a guy, and I went to court for discharging a firearm within the right. city limits. Were, were you ever threatened no. by them? What happened after your book? Did you get any bad repercussions? No, no, I didn't, because you know, I I think that. My story was telling, as Ray said, the tragedies and the triumphs. It's yeah. not about putting down anybody. Yeah. It's about just showing that th these things can happen in life. Everything is not 100% good, but there are some tragedies, and we must be aware of those tragedies. What about you? Any? No, I haven't had any, you know, repercussions. <laughs> Thank from goodness. The <laughs> <laughs> no, I, got to, I was going to rent him. <laughs> I was going to say, I, 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 I 
first little crazy about Gary Gordon. We'll be right back with more on the inside story of Motown after this. back with Motown co-founder and ex-wife of Barry Gordy, Renoma Gordy, single since you're remarried. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Who <laughs> is a very happy woman. <laughs> <laughs> and someone is a Mr. Singleton who's not sure what he is. <laughs> married a single. Next is Mary Wilson, the Supreme. And, of course, at the end is Bobby Taylor, Good the artist that. who really discovered, here we go again, Michael Jackson. And... Not Diana Ross, a little joke. Now, my next two... <laughs> there we go. My next two guests were responsible for Motown's first major successes. He was the first male solo artist with the hit Come To Me, but he was soon overshadowed by others who uh, came after him. However, he was kept on the Motown payroll, but not as a singer, as a uh, janitorial custodian, which was... Mm -hmm. I know. Along with him, we had the lead singer of the first girl group who firmly placed Motown on the charts with please mr postman but she has received nothing recently except a return package from barry gordy stating unsolicited material not accepted please welcome gladys horton of the marvelettes and marv johnson This is a gift of oh, uh, celebrating 30 years of the Postmaster, the Joan Rivers show from the Marvelous. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's adorable. Thank you. Thank you so much. That'll go. Oh, good. My desk fills up. Now, the, what happened? You were just replaced by who? By the Supremes? No. Really? I don't think... And what happened with the group? Well, with the Marvelette, yes. uh, it's a long story. We were successful. We gave Motown their first number one, Please Mr. Postman. And the company was going along fine. And then uh, I uh, left the company to uh, have a child. And my first child was born with cerebral palsy. So I no longer wanted the applaud from the audience after right. that. And I wanted to take care of my right. son. And I spent years uh, with Sammy. And then there came a day, I knew there would come a time that I would be able to get back into the business. And uh, when that did happen, I found out there were millions of bogus marvelettes running around, <laughs> working very cheap. Yeah. And, you know, it, they just, they kind of so, cheapened the name. calling themselves marvelettes. They called so themselves you the again marvelettes. didn't own the, the name. Mocha. Well, Barry Gordy uh, was very smart in that aspect. He uh, named the Marvelettes. We were called the Casting Yets, and they said that was too hard to pronounce. So, they, so he found... Well, that's fair, don't you think, Ray? Right? Sure. That's I mean, right, he yeah. made up the name. Yeah. I but guess. that was for um, patenting reasons, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like a thing where I named the group, so I owned the group. But what about the Jackson Five? What about the... Did you name the Jackson Five? That's their name. <laughs> <laughs> he took it. So, in other words, he can make the a... The name was the Jackson. Right. The last name is Jackson. Now, that's the birth name, correct? Right. Jackson, father. Right. Boop, 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 mother. Right. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Jackson. Now, he took them to court. Now, they they can't he, be called the Jackson Five anymore. They're just going to be called the Jacksons. Are you telling me the Jackson Five can't call them the Jackson Five, even nope. though they are the Jackson Five? Yeah, that's right. They can only call themselves the Jacksons. I was in court with them. That's insane. That's insane. That's the way it is. What, well, what about you? What happened with you? Tell me your story. Well, Joan, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, just off the cuff, you know, I'm a great fan of yours. I watch you all the time. Thank God. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> Tell me more. Being a trooper yourself, you know that the first thing in show business is to have a love of the business. Right. And you know that this love of the business is the thing that helps you in the negative parts. Right. 
Now, I was the first Motown recording artist, ladies and gentlemen, in America. I recorded the first tune, a tune called Come To Me, but that song had a great deal of help from a lot of people that were working with us at that time. We were very young, innocent, energetic entertainers. This was uh, our drug, so to speak. Instead of being influenced by other things on the streets, we were influenced by the white books, the crunk hair, the doo-wop, and what have you. Right. Detroit, which is my home, was loaded with groups and people who could sing and things like that. And we were influenced by people like Jackie Wilson, Little Willie John, and people like that. Now, my stint with Motown was at a young age. I was inexperienced, and all I wanted to do, and all I ever really cared about was to hear an audience give me a round of applause and to say that they enjoyed my performance. And it seems today a somewhat of a shame that uh, uh, a, uh, an organization that was as great as the Motown was that involved so many people who contributed and did so much to make our country better and to make our teenage population have something to do. It seems almost a shame for this situation to have developed, but it did. However, in my case, the positive ended up being, uh, the negative, I should say, ended up being positive because I've grown as a man, and at this time, I have children, I have grandchildren that love me, I have grandchildren that run to my arms whenever I visit them, and so, these things transcend all these little bits and pieces, and I can still do a good performance, Joan, oh, and that's what I'm happy yeah, about. Yeah, that, oh, that's <laughs> right. All right. We'll be back. We've got lots more Motown after this. So stay with us. Town stars Gladys Horton of the Marvel Marvel Marvelous, please. I get crazy. Marv Johnson, as we know, co-found in our Motown and Barry Gordy's ex-wife Renoma Gordy Singleton. She left Mrs. Singleton 20 years ago. We just found that out. Former, well, nice to catch up. Former Supreme Mary Wilson <laughs> and Bobby Taylor. And joining me now, of course, is the last of our guests is Francis Nero. She auditioned and beat out 5,000 other contestants to win a one-year recording contract with Motown, $500 and a dozen red roses. That was 25 years ago. 25 years later now, she has finally got a hot hit single in London called Footsteps Follow Me. So please welcome Francis Nero and have nice to have you on. 25 years. A long up a hit in London? I don't know. Somehow through all that hip-hop and house music and dance somewhere, it just sort of snaked its way through the charts. I think it's the combination of the lyrics, uh, the production, and a little and part you, of me. Well, they know. gave us a plaque to give you, which I think is very sweet, which is presented oh. to commemorate combined sales in the United Kingdom of more than 250,000 copies of Motor City Records single Footsteps follow me, and yes. I thought you should have that. 25 right. years waiting for it. That's nice. Now, you're recording from Motor City Records, right? You're also now recording from Motor City. What are you doing? We're I want to hear what everybody's doing. Motor City Records. You're also recording from Motor City Records, and we've done new recordings, redone some of the old Marvelous stuff. And this is our, our 30th year anniversary for Please Mr. Postman. Ah, oh, that's yeah. great. We're appearing at the Continental Club in Hollywood okay. in behalf of that. Okay. And what about you? Um, what are you doing? Well, what they're both speaking of is a young Englishman. His name is Ian Levine. And uh, he was always a, a Motown enthusiast. He grew up, as a matter of fact, admiring the Motown sound. And so with the help, financial help of his mom, uh, he got together and, uh, with some of us and decided to record us. Kim Weston being one of the artists that he recorded and you're also. Recording too. And I recorded with Great. him also, right. And uh, also, I'd like to add that I will be at a club called Lulu's in Canada. Okay. That's just out of Toronto coming yeah, okay. up. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Hey, next. Hey, hip, hip, hooray right. for, for Ian Levine. He reunited hundreds of Motown artists, and I got to see everybody last year, which was sensational. What I'm doing now, I'm working on a motion picture based on my book, Bury Me in Motown. And folks, the paperback will be out in September. You'll come Very back. Near most time. I'll okay. be back. Mary, right. well, my paperback also, uh, my paperback second right book, is, will be out in August. And John, John, last time I didn't have a recording deal, I got a recording deal. Great. Jim and I recording. Great. I started recording in July, record out in October. My also, um, all, Jim and I, right? Good. No good. wonder. We're, okay. Good. Also, with CEO Pictures. 
we are um, doing a movie based upon my two books. Great. So I'm very, very thrilled. Great. And I will be appearing with Rich Little in Vegas at the Sands You're July 3rd lot. through the 5th. Now, now I, got I got a surprise. <laughs> surprise for you, Joni. This is uh, a yeah. club bamboo. Big Bamboo. That's All where right. I'm working. I was supposed to be working today. But, but I'm here with you. So, uh,